Hi, welcome to Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my funny little internet show about whitewater stuff. And today I want to talk about the clean line principle and modern throw bags. And the clean line principle is something that sort of started going in Europe that I was introduced to this spring. You know, there's a lot of cool innovation happening in Europe and the whitewater industry that's been kind of slowly coming to the U.S. And, and the clean line principle basically says, like, avoid having loose lines, things you can get trapped in on your boat or on your person. Right? It's a little more complicated. I don't know the exact words, but we want to avoid things we can get trapped in. And, you know, it's not something that happens commonly where an arm gets stuck into something or a leg gets stuck into something or an unlocking carry unit gets stuck to, onto it. But it does happen. And if you bought a lot, eventually that kind of thing can happen to you. And so it's good practice to avoid loose lines on yourself and on your boat and to keep things kind of tight. And so this is a historic NRS throw bag and this violates the clean line principle twice. Uh, you can get a hand stuck in this. This is basically a hand entrapment. So if this is tied onto your boat and your hand goes through here, you're stuck to your boat. And the way it attaches to the boat is another hand entrapment and potentially a leg entrapment based on how loose this is. So I've always thought this was awkward, like a weird, this is such an uninspired throw bag that NRS made with just these like, you know, this floppy bag and this, this is another hand entrapment. So actually there's three hand entrapments on this one piece of safety equipment. And this is what we're trying to get away from is these kind of loops and things that a hand can fit through. And so a great example of a throw bag that follows the clean line principle is the super guide throw bag. I love this thing. It's a great waist belt throw bag. The loop you tie onto is in here attached to a carabiner. It's everything succinct. This is something to wear around your waist. There's no extra lines going on. And anytime anything is attached like this, if it's quick release, you're okay. You can quickly unattach it. So this is a great, great throw bag. I highly recommend it. The only downside is it's really kind of made as a waist belt throw bag. If you want to tie this onto your bow, you know, I, when I'm guiding class four plus and five, I want a waist belt throw bag. But on like a road trip, I'm not going to wear this on my waist. It's a little bit impractical for like the class two and three. I want a throw bag with me, something I can attach to my boat, right? But not something that's, you know, like, you know, this, that's just kind of sort of full of dangers. And so, um, another, another throw bag yeah, is a salamander bag. Again, this has a few hand entrapments on it. It has this hand entrapment. Actually, the hand can barely fit through here, so that's a good size. It has this thing on top right here, but it has this nice side buckle. And the side buckle is really nice for just clipping onto the side of a boat somewhere. And again, a hand can get trapped there, but if it's tied to the side of a boat or a frame, it's away from a person. So I feel pretty good about it. And I've, I've enjoyed this bag. One of my favorite things about this bag is this opening. And I did, I did a gear garage show about this early on. It opens and closes like with some metal piece in there. It's pretty cool. And um, you know, one, one thing I think, and, and it has this little funny loop here. Uh, if you want to make this a better throw bag and, and a, a, a good throw bag, make it follow the, the clean line principle. First of all, you can cut this off. This is just kind of useless to hang. And so you can cut this off. Um, you can take this rope, pull this plastic thing off, Retie the knot in there and just make it go across. And um, this little thing doesn't need to be a loop, it can be cut. And so that's what I've done. I had to buy a bunch of throw bags for our rafting company this spring. And I would love to buy super guy throw bags. Even though they're expensive, I love them. They just don't have a quick, easy attachment system yet to just tie them onto a raft. So they're working on it, but right now this isn't really a, it's good, it's a good waist belt throw bag, but not like really appropriate for like clipping onto a boat. So what we did, was we, we, this is the, from the, the loop that goes over the top, we cut it off, so there's no thing over here. We cut this little loop thing here, so now you can still open it. There's still like a line here, but not something you can get trapped in. And then we, again, we took this bottom piece, we took the plastic off and just tied this tight with the bowline inside. I mean, two fingers can get through there, but not a, not a full rope. And you can still clip something onto it. So this is a, a, a salamander throw bag that follows the clean line principle. And I think all the throw bag manufacturers are headed this, this direction. It's gonna take time. Um, just now to the NRS website, I noticed they stopped doing this. They have uh, figure eights at the bottom, figure eight follow through knots with a little tiny loop and they're, they're trying to do, go to a side thing. So I think more and more even NRS is making change. And I think Salamander will too. I mean, I think they're, they're gonna realize that this, this kind of big loop isn't the safest thing. So. I don't know, I think the future of throw bags are ones that don't have big loops, have a tiny little thing at the bottom that you clip to, and then a side attachment that you can just clip onto a D-ring or something out of the way, and the, and the, boat, the, the throw bag can just hang there. So, 
those are my thoughts. If you have a throw bag and you have, again, a big loop, please just like untie that knot in there, bring it in closer for your own safety. Any extra things, any extra loops, try to cut them on your own. You don't need them necessarily. And let's, um, let's try to have safer throw bags if you can. If you can't, no big deal. I mean, you're taking a little bit extra risk. But um, anytime we can be a little bit safer, I think is a good thing. So that's it for this episode. Thank you to everybody for watching. A lot of you have sent me emails and comments saying, hey, great show. We appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, it's a, it's, I'm on the internet. It's kind of weird that I'm like doing this, this internet YouTube TV show. Um, so they know that I'm, I'm providing value for some of you and, and, and some interesting content. It makes me feel really good and I'll keep, keep doing these episodes. So again, if you have, like every episode, if you have questions, comments, add them in the comment section below. Thanks for the nice words. And, uh, yeah, see you next time. Thanks.